The Cube's live coverage is made possible by funding from Dell Technologies, creating technologies that drive human progress. Good late afternoon from Barcelona, Spain. At the Theater of Barcelona, it's Lisa Martin and Dave Nicholson of The Cube covering MWC 23. This is our third day of continuous wall-to-wall -wall coverage on The Cube, and you know we're going to be here tomorrow as well. We've been having some amazing conversations about the ecosystem. We're going to continue those conversations next. Honoré Labordette is here, the VP Global Partner Ecosystem Success Team, Telco, Media, and Entertainment at Red Hat, and Tony Jeffries joins us as well, a Senior Director of Product Management, Telecom Systems Business at Dell. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. Great to have both of you here. So we're going to be talking about the evolution of the telecom stack. We've been talking a lot about disaggregation the last couple of days. Anna, starting with you, talk about the, 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 the evolution of the telecom stack. You were saying before we went live, this is your 15th at least. MWC, <laughs> so you've seen a lot of evolution, but what are some of the things you're seeing right now? Well, I think the interesting thing about disaggregation, which is a key topic, right, because it's so relative to 5G and the 5G core and the benefits and the features of 5G core around disaggregation. But one thing we have to remember when you disaggregate, you separate things, you have to bring those things back together again in a different way. And that's predominantly what we're doing in our partnership with yeah. Dell, is we're bringing those disaggregated components back together in a cohesive way that takes advantage of the new technology, at the same time taking out the complexity and make it an easier for our telco customers to deploy and to scale and to get much more uh, uh, accelerate the time to revenue. Yeah. And so, so that, you know, the trend now is, what we're seeing is two things I would say. One is, how do we solve for the complexity with the disaggregation, and how do we leverage the ecosystem as a partner in order to help solve for those, some of those challenges? Yeah. Tony, jump on in, talk about what you guys announced last week, Dell and Red Hat, and how it's addressing the complexities that Honoré was saying, hey, they're there. Yeah, you know, a lot, our, our customers, our operators are saying, hey, I want disaggregation, I want competition in the market, but at the same time, who's going to support all this disaggregation, right? And so, at the end of the day, there's going to be an operator that's going to have to figure this out, they're going to have an SLA that they're going to have to meet, and so they're going to want to go with a best-in-class partner with, with, with Red Hat and Dell in terms of our infrastructure and their software together as one combined engineered system, and that's what we call a Dell Telecom infrastructure block for Red Hat. And so at the end of the day, you know, um, things may go wrong, and if, if they do, who are they going to call for that support? And that's also a really a key element of an engineered system, is this experience that they get both with Red Hat and with Dell together supporting the customer as one, which is really important to solve this disaggregated problem that can arise from a disaggregated open network. Situation, yeah. So, what does what the what does the market go to the go, the go to market motion look like? Um, people have loyalties in the IT space to technologies that they've embraced and been successful with for years and years. So, you have folks in the marketplace who are die hard, you know, dyed dyed red, mm. red hat <laughs> folks. Um, is it primarily a pull from them? How does how does how does that work? How do you how do you approach that to your your what are your end user joint customers? What does that look like from your perspective? Sure, right. uh, well interestingly enough, both Red Hat and Dell have been in the marketplace for a very long time, right? So we do have the brand with those telco customers for these solutions. What we're seeing with this solution is it's an emerging market. It's an emerging market for a new technology. So there's an opportunity for both Red Hat and Dell together to leverage our brands with those customers with no friction in the marketplace as we go to market together. So our field sales teams will be um, motivated to you know, take advantage of the solution for their customers, as will the Dell team, and I'll, I'll let speak, yeah. uh, Tony speak to the Dell go to market. Yeah, you know, so we, we really co-sell together, right? right? You know, we are to key partners. Um, Dell will end up fulfilling that, that order, right? Um, and we, we, we send these engineered systems through our factories and we send that out either directly to a customer or to a hotel lab, like a intermediate lab where we can further refine and customize that offer for that particular customer. And so we got a lot of options there. 
but, but we're essentially co-selling and, and Dell is fulfilling that from an infrastructure perspective, putting Red Hat software on top and the licensing for that support. So it's a really good mix. And I think, if I may, the, the, one of the key differenti differenti differentiators <laughs> is um, the actual capabilities that we're bringing together inside of this pre-integrated solution. So it includes the uh, Red Hat OpenShift, which is the container software, but we also add our advanced cluster management as well as our Ansible automation, and then Dell adds their orchestration capability along with the features and functionalities of the platform, and we put that together and we offer remote automation, orchestration, and management capabilities that, again, reduces the operating expense, reduces the complexity, allows for easy scale. So it's, you know, certainly it's all about the partnership, but it's also the, cap the capabilities of the combined technology. Yes. I was just going to ask about some of the numbers, and you mentioned some of them. Re reduction of TCO, I imagine, is also a big capability that this solution enables besides reducing OpEx. Talk about the TCO reduction, because I know there's some numbers there that Dell and, and Red Hat have already delivered to the market. Yeah, you know, so these infrastructure blocks are designed specifically for, for core or for RAN or for the edge. We're starting out initially in the core, but we've done uh, some market research with uh, a company called ACG, and ACG has, has looked at day zero, day one, and day two TCO FTE hours saved. Um, and, and we're looking at over 40 to 50% TCO savings over you know, a five year period, um, which is quite significant in terms of cost savings at a TCO level, but also we have a lot of numbers around power consumption and, and savings around power consumption, but also just that experience for our operator that says, hey, I'm going to go to one company to get the best in class from Red Hat until together. That saves a lot of time in procurement and that, that entire uh, ordering process as well. So you get a lot of savings that aren't exactly seen in the FTE hours around TCO, but just in that overall experience by, by talking to one, co one company to get the best of both from, from both Red Hat and Dell together. I think, I think the comic book character Charlie Brown once said, the most discouraging thing in the world is having a lot of potential. <laughs> uh, right. And so when we talk about disaggregating and then re-aggregating or reintegrating, mm -hmm. that, that means choice. Yeah. How, does, how does an operator approach making that choice? Because yeah, it sounds great, we have this integration lab and we you have all these choices. Well, how do I, how do I decide? Yeah. How does a person decide? This is a question for, for uh, Honoré, from a Red Hat perspective, what's the, what's the secret sauce that, that you believe differentiates the Red Hat infused stack versus some other assemblage of, of gear? Well, there's a couple of key characteristics and the one that I think is most prevalent is that we're open, right? So open is in Red Hat's DNA because we're an open source technology company. And with that open source uh, technology and that open platform, our customers can now add workloads. They have options to choose the workloads that they want to run on that open source platform. As they choose those workloads, they can be confident that those workloads have been certified and validated on our platform because we have a very robust ecosystem of ISVs that have already uh, completed that process with open source, with, with Red Hat OpenShift. So then we take the Red Hat OpenShift and we put it on the Dell platform, which is market leader platform, right? And you combine those two things, the customers can be confident that they can put those workloads on the combined platform that we're offering and that those workloads would run. So it, again, it goes back to um, making it simpler uh, making it easy to procure, easy to run workloads, easy to deploy, easy to operate, and all of that, of course, equates to, you know, saving time always equates to saving money. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I thought you wanted to continue. No, I, I think Honoré said it, she, she nailed it, you know, Red Hat is such, so dominant in, in 5G and, and what they're doing in the market, especially in the core and, and where we're going into the RAN you know, next steps are to validate those workloads, those workload vendors on top of a stack. 
and that Red Hat, uh, the Red Hat leader in the core is, is key, right? It's instant credibility uh, in the core market, and so you know, that's another reason why we Dell want to partner with, with Red Hat um, for, for the core market and beyond. We're going to be looking at not only core, but moving into RAN you know, very soon. But then we, we do, we, we take that validated workload on top of that to optimize that workload um, and then be able to instantiate that in the core of the RAN. It's, it's just a really streamlined, uh, good experience for operators. At the end of the day, we, also, we want, want happy customers in between the, you know, our, our mutual customer base, and that's what you get whenever you do that combined stack together. Were operators, any operators, and you don't have to mention them by name, involved in the evolution of uh, the infra, infra blocks. I'm just curious if, it, how involved they were in helping to co-develop this. I imagine they were to some degree. Yeah, I could take that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so in doing so, yeah, we, we can't be myopic and just assume that uh, we nailed it the first time, right? So yeah, we, we do work with partners all the way up and down the stack. You know, um, a lot of our engineering work with Red Hat also brings in customer, customer experience that is, is key to ensure that you're building and designing the right architecture for the core. Um, I would like to use the names, I don't know if I should, but a lot of, <laughs> a lot of those names are, are big names that are, are leaders in our industry. Um, that, but yeah, their, their footprints, their fingerprints are all over those design best practices, those architectural designs that we build together. And then we, we further that by doing those validated workloads on top of that. So just to really prove the point that it's, it's optimized for the core, RAN, edge kind of workload. So, yeah. And it's a huge added value for Red Hat to have a partner like Dell who can take all of those components. You know, take the workload, take the Red Hat software, put it on the platform and deliver that out to the customers. Um, that's really you know, a, a, a key part of the partnership and the value of the partnership because Nobody really does that better than Dell. You know, that center of excellence around you know, delivery and support. Can you share any feedback from any of those nameless operators sure. in terms of, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm even kind of wondering what, what, what the catalyst was for the InfraBlock. Was it operators saying, ah, we have these challenges here? Was it the evolution of the telco stack? And Dell said, we can come in with Red Hat and solve this problem. What, what, and what's been some of their feedback? Yeah, it really comes down to what, what Andre said about, okay, you know, when we're looking at day zero, which is primarily your design, how much time savings can we do by creating that stack for them, right? We have industry experts designing that core stack that's optimized for different levels of spectrum. Um, when we do that, we, we, we save a lot of time in terms of FTE hours for our architects, our operators, and then it goes into day one, right, which is the deployment aspect. We're saving tons of hours uh, for our operators by being able to deploy this. Speed to market is, is key. Um, that ultimately ends up in, you know, faster time to revenue for our customers, right? So, you know, it's, when they see that we've already done the pre-work, th that they don't have to, that's what really resonates for them in terms of that, yeah. Honore. Uh, Lisa and I happen to be veterans of the uh, cloud native space and uh, what we heard from a lot of the folks in that ecosystem is that there is a, a massive hunger for developers to be able to deploy and manage and orchestrate environments that consist of cloud native application infrastructure, mm -hmm. you know, microservices. Right. Um, what we've heard here is that 5G equals cloud native application stacks. Mm -hmm. Is that, is, that a, is that a fair assessment yes. of the environment? And what, and, and what are you seeing from, um, from a supply and demand for that kind of labor perspective? Is there still a, a, a hunger for those folks who, who, who develop in that space? Well, there is um, because the very nature of an open source Kubernetes-based container platform, which is what OpenShift is, the, the very nature of it is to open up that code so that developers can have access to the code to develop the workloads to the platform, right? And so again, you know, the combination of bringing together the Dell infrastructure with the Red Hat software, it, it doesn't change anything. The developer, com the development community still has access to that same container platform to develop to, you know, cloud native types of applications. 
And, um, you know, OpenShift is Red Hat's hybrid cloud platform. So it runs on-prem, it runs in the public cloud, it runs at the edge, it runs at the far edge. So any of the development co community that's trying to develop cloud-native applications can develop it on this platform as they would if they were developing on an OpenShift platform in the public cloud. So in the graduate, the advice to yes. the graduate was plastics, yeah. plastics. As someone who has more children than I can I remember, I forget how many kids I have. Four. That's right, I have four, that's <laughs> right. Three in college and grad school already at this point. Um, cloud native, I don't know, Kubernetes, definitely a field that's going to, it's got some legs. Yes. Okay, so I can get them off my payroll yes. quickly? Yes, yes. Okay, good, good, to, good, good to know, good to know. <laughs> any, any thoughts on the uh, open, uh, that open cloud native world? You know, yeah, there's so many changes that's going to happen, you know, in, in Kubernetes and services that you got to be able to you know, update quickly, CI, CD, obviously the topic is, is huge. How, how quickly can we keep these, these systems up to date, you know, with, with new releases, uh, changes? That's the great thing about an engineered system is that we do provide that lifecycle management, um, you know, for three to five years through this, through this engagement with our customers. So we're constantly keeping them up with the latest and the greatest. Well, do uh, those customers have that expertise in-house, though? Do they have that now, or is this a seismic cultural shift in those environments? Well, you know, they do have a lot of that experience, but it takes a lot of that time, and we're taking that off of their plate and putting that within on us, on our system, within our engineered system, and doing that automatically for them. And so they don't have to check in and, and try to understand what the release certification magister is every quarter. We're providing that to them. We're, we're communicating out to the operator, telling them you know, what's coming up latest and greatest, not only in terms of the software, but the hardware, and how to optimize it all together. That's the beauty of, of these systems. These are five year relationships with our operators that we're providing that life cycle management end to end you know, for, for years to come, right? So, so. so last question, you talked about joint GTM. Availability, when can the operators get their hands on this? Yes, yes, uh, it's currently slated for early September release. Awesome, so sometime yeah. this year. Yes. Well guys, thank you so much for talking with us today about you. Dell, sure. Red Hat, what you're doing to really help evolve the telecom stack, we appreciate it. Next time come back with a customer, we can dig into it. <laughs> That'd be sure great, will. thank you. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, that may happen uh, today, actually. Uh, <laughs> hey. A little bit later, right? Not to let the cat out of the bag, but good news. <laughs> All right, well, usually you're going to want to stick around. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank for you. our guests and for Dave Nicholson, this is Lisa Martin of theCUBE at MWC 23 from Barcelona, Spain. We'll be back after a short break. <laughs>